Do you get tired of praying, serving God, and loving your neighbor? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. A non-Catholic minister recently quit the ministry after more than 20 years of faithful, dedicated service and became a funeral director. When asked why he had changed vocations, he said, I spent 10 years trying to straighten out John and he's still an alcoholic. Then I spent three and one half years trying to straighten out Harold and Susan's marriage problems and they ended up getting a divorce. Later, I tried for two years to help Bob kick his drug habit and he's still an addict. Now at the funeral home, when I straighten them out, they stay straight. Perfect obedience. Today's gospel is a sequel to yesterday's where Jesus' authority was questioned by the high priests and elders. Today, Jesus gives them a parable about two sons who were asked by their father to work in his vineyard. The first refused to go but relented and went. The other said yes but failed to go. We examine today our own progress in our spiritual life. Progress is not only having joy in our interior life, it is about patience, humility, and freedom from self-pity when things do not go our way. When you do not feel like it, continue to faithfully keep your prayer life intact and your helping others an integral part of your daily life. Do not give up when you have pangs of anxiety, when you feel dispassionate, or just lack the interest to do it. Many of us stop serving or do so without energy when they get impatient with the Lord for not answering their prayers to their expectations. We must realize that in spite of all our plans and preparations, we cannot avoid disappointments. We should understand that the Lord allows for the sins and mistakes of others for a good reason. The Lord owes us nothing, but we owe Him everything. His plan for us is always perfect. His promise of a life of peace on earth and joy in heaven should be our motivation for being determined in our prayer life and service to Him. When we find it difficult to pray, when we are arid in feelings and barren in words, this is when the Lord blesses our prayer life more. He does not go by the elegance of our prayers, but by the effort we make to reach out to Him in gratitude and supplication. Do not judge your closeness then to God by your feelings. When you feel devout, do not think that you are pleasing Him. When you feel downhearted and joyless, do not think the Lord has abandoned you. This is the devil sowing the seed in your heart. When you feel the least to please him, but you still do, that is the best love you can offer him. The test of holiness is when you continue to keep following his will despite the lack of good feelings while doing it. When your will is to follow his commandments in spite of your lack of enthusiasm, when your nerves become steely in avoiding temptation, you become more pleasing to God. Yes, feelings help us to pray and to serve with much more fervor, but it should not be our only gauge of how much we are loving the Lord and our neighbor. When our mood is not up to par, in the midst of our own miseries, even when we feel hopeless, our love should never pause, because God's love for us is never and will never be on hold. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, Make me patient and persevering in my prayer life and in my service to you. Make me love you and my fellow men, even if I'm not in the mood, even in my own difficulties, so that I may gain the promises you have laid out for those who are faithful to you. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.